Good afternoon. Buenas tardes. My name is Jose Casares. I'm the assistant professor of Miami Culinary Institute. Today we have a great program for you, Taste of Santo Domingo. And uh, without any further ado, I want to introduce to you uh, Isabel Martinez. She's right next to me. She's been collaborating, collaborating very much in the putting this whole event together. So thank you. Buenas tardes a todos. Welcome to this culinary passage to the Dominican Republic. We are so happy to have you here. Enjoy the best of the Dominican Republic. This is event put together by Miami Dade College, Wilson Campus, on behalf of the Hispanic Heritage Committee. Uh, we have today, thanks to Jose Casals, our chef, uh, Chef Miguel Roques, directly from Punta Cana, to enjoy a wonderful meal that you will have, remember, you will remember the rest of your life, I can assure you of that. And we have also Miss Nelson from Brugal, the best ron dominicano. <laughs> you will have the opportunity to enjoy it. Well, una vez más, muchas gracias por estar con nosotros. Miami Day College, el recinto Wilson, el Culinary um, Institute, y el comité organizador de los eventos de la herencia hispana se complace en tenerlos a todos ustedes acá. Un recorrido por la cocina dominicana. Qué rico, qué sabor. Con José, con Miguel Roques, perdón, y nuestro querido chef de la casa, José Casals. Miguel Roques representa lo mejor de la República Dominicana en el arte culinario. Viene, estudia en Estados Unidos y vuelve al terruño para llevar la cocina internacional, pero con el mejor toque, el toque de la cocina dominicana. Lo dejo con los expertos. Gracias. Gracias. Hi, everybody. My name is Cricket Nelson. I'm the brand ambassador for Brugal Rum from the Dominican Republic. I'm actually from Boston, but I don't know why they chose me, but I'm not complaining. I love my job. Um, I get to come to events like this and, and help everybody enjoy rum. So what better job could I have? Um, is everybody here? Can I see a raise of hands? Who loves rum? Yeah. Who's not so sure? Shy. That's OK. Don't be shy. Um, so my job is to convert all of you to rum lovers. So I'm going to ask the same question at the end. <laughs> um, in front of you, you're going to notice that you have um, some tasting set up. And there's a couple booklets covering the lower portion of the tasting mat. I'm going to ask that you leave those there because I don't want you cheating. I'm going to ask you to tell me what kind of flavors you, and aromas you get out of the rum first. And then we'll look at, at uh, what um, kind of the company has decided is in there. And there's no wrong answer to this. Um, as we start, before I jump into um, tasting, I wanted to, if you guys can pull out, I have some little handouts for you guys um, in front of you. I'm going to talk about the physiology of taste. Um, I'm going to give you a little history, not too much history on the company because I want, since this is a culinary presentation, I wanted to focus on uh, the taste and aromas of rum and how we perceive taste and how that can affect what you get out of, uh, out of a rum when you take a sip of it. So um, this little diagram here, um, I've been told that kind of it's evolved. I chose this picture from the internet because I think it's the most approachable. Um, there's some new science now that claims that uh, you can see there's kind of some areas here. Sorry. There's some areas here uh, in brown that show where on your palate you pick up specific uh, flavor profiles. So there's sweet, salty, bitter, um, umami, and now actually they're saying that there's also uh, receptors in your palate that pick up carbohydrate. And I'm, that's kind of new, so I'm not super educated on that, so I didn't include it, but um, maybe next time when they invite me back. Um, so in order for you to taste things, um, the food molecules or the flavor molecules first have to dissolve in your mouth, and you have flavor receptors all over your tongue. Um, all of your tongue can receive the flavors, but there's, I think, specific areas that are a little more sensitive to certain profiles. Um, another thing that really affects the way that you taste is your sense of smell. Um, and that can come from uh, memory as well, like a, a pleasurable moment. Maybe your grandmother made this amazing apple pie and you taste something and that triggers that memory of when you were a child and you had that apple pie. So with that in mind, all the way over here on my right, ladies, um, there's a, a number of little dishes that I have set up with some different ingredients in them. These are all ingredients that are found in the aroma and flavor of rum. And I'm going to ask that you start to pass those around before we start tasting. And what I'm going to do with this is I want you guys, I want to help trigger 
um, for you guys, the flavors and aromas that you're going to find when we start to nose and taste the rum. So ladies, can you just start to, um, you know, yeah, in, enjoy the aroma yourself and then pass it on. There's a lot of ingredients. I've got citrus, there's coconut, there's honey, chocolate, caramel. Um, if anybody has any questions about it, feel free to ask. But as those are going around the room, we're going to jump in and start talking about the rum. So our rum is a dry style of rum. Uh, it's made in the Dominican Republic, and the company was founded in 1888, which is why our, uh, sorry, we have the 1888, which is kind of our signature. This is, seems to be everybody's favorite. I know it's mine, and we'll be tasting that tonight, but that's why we have, 18, it's called 1888, because the company was founded then. Um, our rum is, um, is, sorry, I'm losing my train of thought. <laughs> I'm trying to cram an hour of presentation into 20 minutes. <laughs> um, so our rum is distilled, like I said, in the Dominican Republic. Um, it's double distilled to remove a lot of the alcohols or what we call congeners, which um, number one, who here has ever had a hangover? Hangover. <laughs> okay, well we invite you to drink responsibly. <laughs> yes. However, I know that sometimes hangovers happen and a lot of times that comes from the alcohols uh, that are left in, in uh, the process of distilling. We double distill ours so that we come with a clearer, finer spirit. Our rum comes off of the still at 95%, which is very clean. Um, let's go ahead and jump in as those dishes are going rotating around the room. And we're gonna start with um, the extra dry. The extra dry is, is aged for two to five years in American oak. We use the same cask management system as the Macallan Scotch. So what that means is that we're really picky about the barrels that we use. Um, all of our sugar cane and, and the trees from which we make our casks are sustainably harvested and grown. And um, all of the sugar cane comes from the DR. Um, our rum is made from molasses. And then, like I said, double distilled to create a pure spirit aged for two to five years in the extra dry. And then this one is, is triple filtered through a charcoal filtration system to remove the color and refine the flavor. This particular rum was designed specifically um, for people that like a drier style of spirit. So maybe you're a tequila or a vodka or a gin drinker. This rum will appeal to your palate. It's also, because it's really light and dry, it works really well for cocktails. So let's go ahead and nose the spirit. Now when you're, when you're sampling spirits, you don't, unlike wine, you don't stick your nose all the way in. You want, you want to hold it up, like kind of around the chin area is usually good. Everybody has a different depth perception there, but um, you want to just kind of swirl it around and nose the spirit. And the first thing you're going you're gonna to get, you're going to notice that it's very clear, right? Super clear. And then you're going to nose it. And can anybody tell me what, what they get when they nose it? And maybe some of these dishes will help spark some, some memories for you. Anybody? Vanilla. vanilla, yes. And the vanilla is a very characteristic of, of cask aging, of barrel aging. Um, anybody else? Citrus is another one, yes. This dry style has a lot of citrus and a little bit of coconut, which is very subtle. Um, but you also get that on the palate when you, when you take a sip. So now we're going to take a little sip. And when you're sampling rum, you want to take a small sip. Cheers. Salut. <laughs> and you're going to let, let it um, kind of roll around your palate a little bit. And what, the reason that we do this twice, so you're going to come back and do it a second time. And the second time, you'll be able to pick up those flavors a little bit better because the first thing that your tongue and your, your flavor perceptors are going, going to receive is the alcohol. So we want to get past that. So what, you're kind of seasoning your tongue, so to speak. So you're going to come back and raise your glass a second time and take another sip and let it linger on your tongue before you swallow. And then when you, after you swallow, you want to keep your mouth open and breathe out through your mouth, and that's going to help you to pick up those flavors. So you see you have a very crisp, dry spirit. And I think on this one, on the flavor profile, you get a lot of, I get a lot of citrus. Everybody else? Anybody? Citrus? Anybody get anything else? Maybe a little tiny bit of that coconut on the finish. Does anybody else get that? I do. Anyway, it's wonderful for making cocktails. My favorite cocktail with this rum is a handshake and daiquiri. Um, and... Uh, <laughs> I would love to come back and do some cocktail demos. Hopefully I'll be able to do that because I think that's a wonderful cocktail. And that's a good uh, base cocktail for you to learn 
because from that you can build out and add extra ingredients and kind of become your own mixologist. Okay, next we're gonna jump into the Añejo rum. Now, I'm gonna tell you something very interesting. Um, a lot of people, I think particularly in Miami with the Latin contingency, everyone loves the aged spirits and the Añejo. And um, the Añejo and the extra dry are actually the same spirit. The difference between the two is that the extra dry is again uh, triple filtered through charcoal filtration to refine the color. Take, so this Añejo, they go through charcoal filtration and then you get the extra dry. So. They're both very fine spirits. A lot of people have the misperception that if it's a white spirit, then it's not as good of quality, but this is actually the same quality. It's just a different profile because we've processed it differently. So anyway, let's jump into the Añejo rum. And you're gonna nose that. Anybody, someone wanted to shout out what they get? What, what do you smell? Does it remind you of anything that you had when you were a kid? Maybe your mom or your grandma made something? Any Chocolate, okay. Anybody else? Anybody else get um, vanilla? Vanilla on, on an aged spirit is, the, is, especially with rum, is the most common thing that people get. Wood? So, what's that? Wood. wood. Definitely wood. So, the charcoal, it's an interesting thing with the charcoal filtration that actually takes out a lot of that wood tannin, but in the Añejo, it still comes out. And um, I think this is one of the things, our, a lot of people that are whiskey drinkers actually really enjoy our rum and I think it's because of the barrel aging and the, ca the cast management system that we use because um, a lot of the flavors that are found in, uh, in whiskeys are uh, characteristics are also found in our rum. Um, our barrels are um, first fill, they're American oak like I said and we use Jack Daniels Jim Beam and Heaven Hill barrels to age our rum. And it was really interesting for me actually when I was in the Dominican Republic, I got to taste the separate rums from each of the different barrels and it was amazing to me how different they were. So they take all those three expressions and blend them together to make the Añejo rum. So let's go ahead and take a sip. And remember you're going to take two sips, right? You're gonna visit it twice. And now on the palate, you, this is still dry. Does anybody get kind of a sweet profile from this? Yeah, this is sweet. yeah a little bit sweet. So the interesting thing about this is this is your, is again, talking about the palate and your um, flavor receptors and your sense of, of smell and all of that. Um, we don't add any sugar coloring or flavor to our rums. It, all the color comes from the barrel aging and all of the flavor comes from the barrel aging. So. Although your, scent, your perception comes that, that it's a little bit sweeter, that's actually from the barrel. The, so there's no extra sugar in there. But it does have kind of a sweet profile. Um, and anybody else get um, a little bit of like caramel or honey from this? You taste the wood, you definitely taste the wood. That, that comes from the barrel aging, exactly. All right. Now, the next one that I'm going to share with you guys is the Extra Viejo, and I'm actually gonna just pick that bottle up really quick. I don't usually include this in my sampling in Miami. However, since this is, in particular, a Dominican um, presentation, I wanted to share this with you because this is the Dominican Republic's favorite rum. Everybody drinks this down there. It's quite delicious, and this is aged up to eight years. Okay, and so we're gonna go ahead and jump into tasting this, and you'll notice that this has a beautiful, like, uh, rich amber color. And again, the darker the color is because it's aged longer in the barrel. And it's also gonna have a richer flavor profile because of the, um, the contact that it gets with the wood. And for those of you who know a little bit about barrel aging, we use, like a, we use a pretty um, medium to well char, I would say, on our barrels. So um, what that does is it opens the pores of the wood and you get more flavor. So let's go ahead and nose that. And what do you guys get? This one, I, I, I think, for me, the first one, I, I like um, honey and dried fruit is what I get the most of. Some people get caramel or toffee. Um, let's go ahead and take a sip. And you'll notice that this has a little bit more mouthfeel or a palate coat, and you're gonna notice the wood a lot more on this. Um, Again, this is uh, the Dominican Republic's favorite rum, so I, was, I, I thought it would be appropriate to share it with you. It's not as popular in this market. The softer profiles are a little bit uh, more popular here. Um, okay, everybody, we're going to, and you get, uh, everybody gets a lot more of the wood in this one, right? The lingering kind of the wood tannins, that's kind of the, on the palate and also the lingering finish. All right, finally, we're gonna go with the 1888. 
And this happens to be my favorite in our profile. Um, and this is what we like to call our whiskey lover's rum. Um, again, still dry, but it sees a lot more time in the barrel. And um, this gets six to eight years uh, in American oak. And then it sees an additional two to four years in first fill Spanish sherry cask. So those of you have, who have enjoyed sherry before are going to know that that's going to bring out a, a little bit of a different flavor profile from the other rums that don't see sherry. So let's go ahead and take a nose of this. And you're going to see, I, I get really beautiful like spices, a little chocolate. Anybody else? Coffee, you said? Coffee, yep. That's, a, that's a, on the money. All right, let's go ahead and take a sip. Oh, it's delicious. <laughs> <laughs> we should have had you as set up. Yeah. Would you like to share mine? <laughs> um, okay, so what does everybody taste when, they, when they're tasting the 1888? This is, I think, our crown jewel. I love this one. Do we have any old-fashioned drinkers in the house? Yeah? Mm -hmm. So I love this by itself, and that's the way that I drink it most of the time. But every once in a while, I do like to enjoy a cocktail. And I think a, an old-fashioned made with the 1888 is like out of this world. So <laughs> yes. encourage you next time you're in a bar to ask, ask for one. So can anybody tell me what, the, what flavors do you get out of the 1888? Anybody? Oh, you guys are so quiet. Maybe I should have given you some coffee to start. <laughs> Wake you guys up. <laughs> okay, so on this, again, the wood is more uh, a stronger profile, um, but also dried fruit I get, toffee. Um, I think it has a much rounder, richer uh, flavor profile on the palate. It l has a longer lingering finish. It's really quite a beautiful expression. So... Um, on that note, because there's a little bit of a chocolate note in there, you'll notice, and I forgot to ask you to save this till last, in Miami we have a tradition to give kisses when we say hello, and also when we say see you later. I never like to say goodbye, but see you later. So I'm going to let you guys end with a, a, a little kiss of chocolate uh, to enjoy with your 1888, and feel free to set your expressions aside and enjoy them along with uh, the chef's wonderful food that you're going to be tasting this afternoon. Thank you so much for your time, and I look forward to coming back and uh, doing some more trainings with you guys. Thanks for having me. Chef, Thank you. Thank you. on to you. Thank you. This program is brought to you by Miami Culinary Institute at Miami-Dade College. For more information about the schools and the culinarium program, please visit www.miamidadeculinary.com or call 305-237-3276.